Have you ever played a game during your childhood that you fondly remember, but hear nothing about, or play a game that is just so amazing, yet nobody has ever mentioned it, and you even wonder why you even got the game in the first place? Okay. The title may be a bit of an oxymoron, but the point of this series is to take a look at some obscure games that we deem classic worthy, either at the time or recently. Now keep in mind that this series is both an analytical review and a retrospective where the term classic is used loosely. This episode's hosts will be Julian and Don Shea as they both look at some unique and different games to decipher whether or not they should be deemed as classics. And the theme is arcade-like games. The first game I want to take a look at is Geometry Wars Galaxy on the Wii. This game came out on November 20th, 2007 and is an arcade multi-directional shooter reminiscent of Asteroids. I remember playing this with my brother and having lots of fun, but we are here to reflect on the game itself to decide whether or not it holds up as an obscure classic. Wait, that's not a real thing. Let me go ahead and set it up and... Okay, I've had enough. Uh, yeah, that was insane. How did I even play this? I feel like I'm going to have a seizure with so much going on. The particle effects are out of this world and there's so much variety in the enemies. They all have their place and do different things to try to screw you up. Like this black hole that just sucks everything up. My goodness, this game is mind-boggling. The soundtrack fits perfectly with the retro future nostalgic vibe. The gameplay is very simple with it being you know, a plain and simple arcade shooter. Yeah, what did you expect? Okay, fine. You are a click button who can turn and shoot things. These things that you shoot give you particle effects that even Tetris effect must have taken note on. Uh, there is a help me button that gets rid of all the traffic on your screen. Get it out of here. A very simple game that gets complicated real quick. In the story, well, uh, the point of the game is to survive as long as possible to get these points to unlock other levels. The use of the Wii Remote makes me quake as I move by using the nunchuck and turn by pointing the sensor at the screen. Uh, just makes me shiver. Makes me quake just thinking about it. I know that this game is a long-running game in the series. Oh, wait. I know that this is a game in a long-running series, and although this is the only game I've played in this series, I can proudly say that this is a bona fide classic that needs more recognition as a highlight in the many arcade shooters for its effects and bombastic soundtrack. Maybe a short game, and I did play like less than 10% of it because of the effects on me. Uh, it's definitely a unique take on this genre. It should be looked at beside classic arcade games like Galaga, 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 Rebecca, Nigga, and Alien Invader. Yes, I know this is asking for a lot, but trust me, just please, please. When it comes to puzzle games, people usually think about the obvious games such as Tetris, Bejeweled, or Candy Crush but no one ever really thinks about the more obscure ones, such as Puzzle Bobble, uh, Magical Drop, or Puyo Puyo. Today, I like to focus on a more obscure puzzle game, and that game is Money Puzzle Exchanger. This is an arcade game published by SNK and developed by the company Face, and the arcade release was January 15, 1997, with their PlayStation release coming out in November 5th of 1998. Eventually this game would be re-released on this new generation of consoles, uh, June 28th, 2018. So for the story of this game, the game follows two high school girls, Sakura Mitsukoshi and Asahi Takashima, who are best friends with monetary quirks. Sakura, who turns into the money idol exchanger, is known for helping people manage their money, and Asahi turns into the idol debt miser, who is known for helping lend people money. They get involved with the scheme of stopping Note Bank, also known as Might Dealer, who wants to rearrange the markets in such a way that makes her rich at the expense of other people. However, despite her being an adult, uh, her minions consist of students from Kisaragi High School, the same school that Asahi and Sakura go to. Some characters such as Lulula, Cherry Biter, Frank, and Cecil 
LD Labor Pound end up in these evil schemes. And the other characters like Bill Bank ends up in these schemes because of their relation to Might Dealer or Aina Arashizaki or every worker because simply because she's broke. In the PlayStation version of this game, there are extended story segments explaining how Sakura and Asaki encounter these characters and how they're prompted to fight them. So in these extended story segments, we actually get to see tributes to magical girl anime such as Sailor Moon from the 90s. For example, the character Sakata Blybov or Makarmokoli is one of the female characters in this game who's actually a teacher at their high school. And he actually sees what Sakura and Asahi are up to. So in response, he becomes a tuxedo mask style hero and helps them fight for justice. Having this extra context would be great, but unfortunately it's only in the PlayStation version of the game. And we record this game using the arcade re-release on the Switch and PS4. So unfortunately, we don't have the story segments. Money Puzzle Exchanger is a puzzle stacking game where coins of different values will slowly start to fill the screen, similar games to like Magical Drop and Puzzle Bubble. The currency that's used in this game is called Yen, which is the Japanese currency, and you need to combine these coins in order to create higher values. Five one coins will make a five coin, two five coins will make a ten coin, five ten coins will make a fifty, uh, two fifties will make a one hundred coin, and five one hundred coins will make five hundred. When you combine two 500s, you'll get 1,000, and 1,000 is the highest value, which will cause more coins to go to your opponent's screen. Occasionally, two bonus tiles will appear on your screen, a green RU and a blue ER, and these will help you clear your screen faster. The green RU will rank up all coins of the same denomination, such as 10 coins and 50 coins, and the blue ER will erase all coins of the same value. The game is won when any coin reaches the bottom of your opponent's screen. The game plays a tutorial before you start the game, so you can learn the controls and mechanics there. However, since this is a Japanese game, there's quite a bit of English that is used. Throughout the game, the game has such lines as, Let's fight to computer, and you put the same kind of items. That's okay. Did you pay the money, didn't you? You have to pay. It's a practicing to test your ability. So in the game, there are three modes. Uh, versus computer, which is the arcade mode. Solo play, which is the practice mode. And one player versus two player. Versus con, like I mentioned, is the arcade mode where you go against seven computer players with Might Dealer being the final boss. Solo play is the practice mode where it kind of acts, it kind of acts similar to a survival mode where you just see how long you last. And it's pretty much just for a high score. So multiplayer is pretty explanatory where you play with one other person, but what makes it different from the arcade mode is that you don't just play as Exchanger and Debt Miser. You can actually play as all the characters throughout the game, even the final boss. So in conclusion, if you're a fan of puzzle games and the Sailor Moon aesthetic, then you should definitely give this game a try. You can get this game on PS4, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch for $7.99. I'd say it's a decent price. Not too expensive, but I mean, I paid more for <laughs> older games. So please, if you're a fan of puzzle games, give this game a try. Well, I'm literally never going to get another chance to talk about this garbage ever again, so might as well do it now. Blastworks released on the Wii on June 10, 2008, and is a side-scrolling shooter reminiscent of Hong Kong 97. Okay, fine. It's very more reminiscent of Scramble. Uh, let's get this over with and boot this mother up. Ooh, online capabilities. Too bad they ain't possible to look at now. Okay, so this is... Uh, boring. Wasn't I supposed to build something? Or oh, whoa, whoa! Um, excuse me? Wait, that's what they meant by build, de trade, destroy? Oh, God! The gameplay is... Guess fine enough with you being able to take your enemy's weapons and use it against others, and everything is usable, including the boss's weapons. Wow, this game is really stupid, yet one of the most fun arcade shooters I've played in a while, so does it deserve to be an obscure classic? I'll answer that soon enough. 
But let's go ahead and keep talking about the other components in this game. Wow, these graphics sure are bad considering how badly you match it with the background. I mean, it's a neat background, but it's so distracting to just see this on it. This is a very simple game, and I'm pretty sure the online component was the major draw of the game since the story and the arcade mode are basically the same. Oh yeah, the story. There is none. I can't even make it up since I didn't finish the campaign. I guess you could probably make your own story, just like you can make your own levels and designs, which were probably cool at the time. You know, now with games like Mario Maker, games like this mean nothing to me. But at its time, it was revolutionary and innovative. I think you know where this is going. This game doesn't really hold up, but the fact that it was deemed innovative by IGN, who are for sure trustworthy. Yeah, trustworthy. I mean, the gimmick, which doesn't change the fact that this is just a plain and simple side scroll, is a fine gimmick, but other than that, I don't see a reason for me to ever return to this game. I may feel indifferent to the soundtrack, but you want to know what makes this game a bona fide classic that should be put next to games like Persona 5 and Yakuza 0, even when none of these games have anything in common? Except for the fact that it takes place in Japan? Yeah, that's right. Remember the intro song that I played in the beginning? Yeah. It was from this game, and it's so good, I'm going to use it for the rest of the series. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is what made that game worth revisiting. This song is the only reason why this game is an obscure classic. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's been quite a welcome bit to the cringe since I've just sat at this desk. Welcome just to the cringe Olympics. Oh, okay. At home, mm -hmm. we haven't really done a proper SVU episode. What since. we're doing here today is we're going to look at the most cringiest videos of all time. I'm sorry. Definitely Let's just go time. ahead and get started so with uh, the topic. Five rounds of this, basically. Fighting games. Yo. Okay. So, what old genre of fighting?